early in development and sense of humor, uh, sense of humor. And, and, and these things are cross-culturally universal. Uh, and, and so uh, the notion that all of our nature consists just of the contingencies of reinforcement during our lifespan struck me as as problematic. And so and the, so really that search for a solid scientific foundation for a theory of human nature is what led me to evolutionary theory. Uh, and uh, and then, of course, reading people like uh, Trivers, Don Simons, uh, George C. Williams, uh, of course, W.D. Hamilton, some of the great evolutionary biologists of the last century uh, led me to the view that I could actually test some evolutionary hypotheses in humans. And at the time that I started, there were almost no empirical tests. And, you know, if you know anything about uh, the kind of Berkeley, Minnesota tradition, a lot of my mentors were in Minnesota, there's a very strong empirical tradition. And so as a psychologist trained in an empirical tradition, you, you have to test these things. And what I realized is that there were almost no empirical tests of these evolutionary hypotheses. And so, uh, and so that's what led me to that. And, uh, and, and some of the most obvious ones were mating. So as a sexually reproducing species, everything has to go through mating. Uh, and so if humans don't have pretty interesting and complex uh, psychological adaptations for mating, then we're kind of out of business. So, I mean, survival and mating, but if you're a sexually reproducing species, you have to go through the bottleneck of mating, you know, and that is, it, it, it's not a simple process. Of course, if you're asexual, um, you know, you don't have to go searching for a mate, but uh, sexually reproducing species, you have to select a mate, you have to attract a mate. You, in our species, you have to be mutually selected by that mate. Uh, and, uh, and then in our species, of course, we have long-term mating, pair bond of mating, uh, which is extremely rare in the mammalian world, uh, the male, male and king. We have something like 5,000 species plus of mammals, and only something like three to 5% have anything resembling pair bonded long-term mating. But humans do have it. It's um, it's it's part, and that's part of our nature. Uh, now, as we get into uh, mating strategies, one of the things that I argue is is that long-term mating is not the only mating strategy.